Hello, I'm just checking that we are up and running um, and I'll start in a couple of minutes for you. just wait till half past because that's when we said we were going to go live so just in case there's a few few people joining then uh, we'll get started okay so um i think we'll get started now and then if anyone joins late then that's fine um so I'm Molly Darlington. I'm just going to firstly say that um, as I go through uh, photos on the screen and talking, I can't actually see your questions. So I'll answer any questions that you have um, at the end of the talk. Um, and then, but if you want to ask them throughout, then then that's fine. Like if something sort of interests you or you need to want to know more about equipment or anything, anything really. Um, so I am a sports photographer. Um, and I work for Action Images um, and Reuters. Like, um, so I'm just sort of going to run you through my journey, how I got into it, um, what I photograph, and some of some of my photos, and how I sort of took those photos. Um, so, uh, firstly, like I started off photographing um, at non-league football club called 1874 Northwich. Um, they're my local football club, um, and when I was in college. I saw an advertisement on the board and it said, oh, we're looking for a photographer, voluntary, um, to sort of take some photos for the programme, for the social media and all that kind of thing. Um, so I thought, oh, quite like football. And I was studying photography, so sort of why not? Um, so I did this from the age of about probably 16. Um, that was when I was at college. Um, and I did it for three three years um, and carried on a little bit throughout university but I sort of did it home and away every game of the season sort of for, um, for for that time and that's sort of where I learned what what to do um, I self-taught myself on how was best and what was best to take photos of and all that kind of thing so um, I at this stage I was um, shooting on a Canon 5D Mark III um, and then I just had uh, I started with a, I think it was a 15 to 300 lens or something like that. And then it, um, and then I upgraded it to a 70 to 200. So I was just using my 5D and my 70 to 200, um, just literally sitting on a little stool uh, by the goal, um, usually capturing goals and celebrations really. Um, so obviously in the non-league stuff, there's like low light, um, so that's obviously quite a big obstacle um when you're not you when you're using like less like less expensive equipment let's say um but like for me the 5d was perfect and it did absolutely everything that i needed it to at that stage um obviously when it's non-league there's less pressures so you can move around the pitch you can sort of do what you want really to an extent um so yeah this is the celebration obviously um they made me feel very welcome there and obviously they use the pictures in the in the local paper in the program and sort of all of their social media sites etc um so it was just kind of capturing different parts like and this was when i went back more recently and i was testing out the r3 before it came out um and, and i took the shot obviously the light in the um in the ticket hut was very like dark dull she had an umbrella up it was raining so it was just nice to capture a little bit something a little bit different and obviously the r3s work excellently in like dull dark light um so so then obviously from 1874 north which i sort of moved on when i was at uni and i asked the local football team the the university football team i asked them um who uh, who I could approach about photographing them, take some, taking some photos for them. Again, just for free, really. 
um, just to help improve myself, a different environment and that kind of thing. So the football team, they played on AstroTurf, which when the light's out, the sun's out, different lighting kind of thing, that you can hit some quite big obstacles with the light and the pitch and the reflection and that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, um, I did this while I was at uni and actually uh, in the end after... I'd done the football probably for about six months, just providing it for the players really, um, and to help myself improve. They they started paying me um, to take photos of the sports team so that they could use the pictures for social medias um, and all that kind of thing. So so that sort of was like my first sort of paid um, role in photography, in sports photography anyway. Um, so while I was at university, um, I went to Manchester Met. Um, and there was a lad who came in to do a talk he was called uh, ross cook and he had been to mmu and he was working in photography world sports photography world he was very football clubs photographer um and he sort of i went and chatted to him after his presentation and said like oh yeah i really like football photography whatever how'd you get into it that kind of thing um and that was when he said oh well if i can't make any games i'll let you know um so he did that and this was um very the Bradford City and um it was my first sort of profession professional football match um and obviously because I was doing it for the club because I was replacing Ross for that one game um I had to do the mascot shots and all that kind of thing uh, following them onto the pitch so here is Jermaine Beckford with the mascot um and this was just a moment before they had that actual photo taken in the middle of the pitch and I think it pretty much sums up um football for me like like it's not it's not just a game like to some people like this kid is absolutely like ecstatic about being in the middle of the football pitch with like his idol uh, and I yeah I really love that so um while I was at uni obviously I was studying photography um and I tried to sort of tailor all my projects around um around sport so um i've always used canon the uni actually did use nikon um but i didn't really i didn't i can't say i stepped into it uh, to use it um so yeah um i stuck with my 5d uh, i had the 70 uh, i had my 7200 still and then i had my um 2470 so at this stage i was still just my maximum lens was 7200 which was fine like it works and you've got to capture what's in front of you and look at it from a different angle. So um, whilst I was also at university following on from this, um, I was contacted by Matthew Ashton, who is a football photographer and he runs his own agency called AMA Sports Photo, um, who they at the time were Wolves Club photographers. So while I was at uni, I tailed my final year um, project around Wolverhampton Wanderers Football Club and at the end I made like a little small program a style book um, which showed like the ins and outs of the club like the fans the games the training sessions sort of like the behind the scenes and then I did some portraits with some of the ex-players as well um so yeah um at this stage I was borrowing um a 400 lens off Matthew um which sort of set me up better for the bigger games um so this I've obviously put in black and white and that's just because the color balance was slightly interesting like so inside the ground it was all very yellow but then outside the ground it was like quite blue so like I couldn't quite get it right so I thought if I put it in black and white maybe it'll give it that like sort of contrast that it needs and I think it works better in black and white than the color version um so again like this is just the changing moves before the match like quite like the leading lads in this picture um, and I sort of presented this alongside the next one which like again like the lines lined up perfect, perfectly sort of so I presented these one next to each other um, for my final um, exhibition and obviously the colours are very yellow which are obviously the wolves colours like they're both like kind of complement each other quite nicely but they're both very different areas of the ground um, so again like training sessions which is like behind the scenes um obviously everywhere is very yellow at wolves so uh that, that's kind of uh 
that's kind of what what was going on here um i then went to the city parade which was obviously still for matthew i did this just from stood on the ground with the crowds there are media pens but at this stage i sort of wasn't uh i wasn't really um looking for a media pen if that makes sense so i was trying to capture something different Unfortunately, this one wasn't the player's boss, but the manager's boss, and he is in the middle there. So it's, it's different perspectives and nice light kind of thing. Um, so I sort of went on from this to um, the Women's World Cup. Uh, that was when I graduated from university um, in July, June, July, 2019. Uh, so as soon as I finished, I went to France for the Women's World Cup. And I travelled France for 30 days with a colleague called Charlotte Wilson, who works for a company called Offside Photo Agency. Um, and we shared the drive-in, like accommodation and everything. And we planned before we went what games we were going to cover and like sort of how, um, sort of like where they were and how we were going to get to each ground and how we were going to sort of cover them. Um, and we for the first 14 days we covered a game every day in a different area of France which was obviously like quite tough and um we were obviously driving like not just to Paris we were driving to places further away and stuff like that so it, it was quite it was quite intense at that time um and I remember like this photo is one of my favorites because like I remember I was having like a really low time at one stage because I was like nothing's going my way I was at the wrong end like I I just couldn't seem to get anything to like happen for me in front of the camera um and then this happened and this was um number eight she's julia Ertz, uh, for the usa and she scored this goal which was a header obviously and i just thought the light the hair the shadows like it just sort of perfectly lined up for me um and i really just like how it worked out and then there was obviously celebrations and i was at the right end so it sort of picked me back up a bit from like being in that like lull of like not sort of um like sort of being like a bit down in the dumps has nothing happened in front of me so like sort of when you choose your corner um you're on a list so like there's priority lists so like the wire agencies and then um and then sort of whose country is like there and all that kind of thing and like what compared to what country you're from and that um so um when you're choosing your corner it's sort of a little bit potluck you don't know what's going to happen in front of you at the end of the day these this was against chile like usa are probably the best women's team around like they won the world cup so like you would obviously choose to sit at usa's end but obviously everybody can't choose to sit there so um it's just again a little bit there, there's, there's a little bit of luck to it on like if you're sat in the right corner and obviously if you choose the right corner but you might not always choose the right corner so it's just, it's just uh, sometimes you just need a bit of a pick me up for for that kind of thing. Um, again, like looking at the women's World Cup from a different angle, like there's the trophy with all the hands. Like doesn't sort of say who's won it, but sort of says like this togetherness of like we've won the World Cup and like this is what this is what we've achieved. The confetti coming down in the background like just kind of makes a different angle from it. Um, yeah, and again, it's just lifting the trophy. So um, standard trophy picture, really. Again, choosing like your spot for the trophy picture is a bit, bit like lucky. Like the wire agencies get taken through first, and then um, it's sort of a free for all as to where you can get and where you come into it and that kind of thing. Um, so, so yeah, that's sort of sort of that really. Um, I'm just going to, I am, I did say I would, uh, I would, I did say I would ask for questions at the end, but I am just going to check now to see if we have any questions. Wow. Well, well, dear. Oh, we have a few. Uh, so James, hi James. And Jeremy, I've been a sports photographer boats etc and shot many many times for classic cars magazines i started by, by shooting motocross never took a course in my life sent images to magazines and now i'm still an, an freelance and that's purchase one suggestion I 
no um so okay we'll go back to we'll go back to sharing do you shoot with a mirrorless or dslr um so i shoot with dslr i use uh canon um I use Canon 1DX Mark III's at the moment. I have tried out the R3's at the Paralympics, um, which I'll show you some photos from uh, later. Um, but but yeah, at the moment I'm using 1DX Mark III's, which I do really like, I love them. So yeah, I will carry on and reshare and then play this. Um, so this was from Ever obviously Everton's <laughs> Everton's one of Everton's home games, and it was at Christmas. And uh, this is Speedo Mick. He um, he sort of walks around the stadium uh, before the game and collects money for charity. So um, he's quite he's very well known <laughs> around the ground. Um, and I saw him literally walk out of one of the houses on the left um, with his bucket. And he doesn't always he always has speedos on, but he doesn't always have a Christmas hat on. So I put, positioned myself to where he was walking towards. And then he did this lovely little jump and it just kind of matched up uh, perfectly in front of the stadium with the Everton badge and sort of the, just the just the like this explains Everton's ground really the back streets and the badge and all that kind of just added like to the together for me um and then so at this stage um when I finished the world cup I was offered a job uh, by uh, Reuters Action Images so uh, action images like is the sports side of Reuters um so uh, I started working for them pretty much the first week in August of 2019 uh, and that was just covering sports so championship Premier League bit of rugby rugby league rugby union um all that kind of thing and um this was when Leeds got promoted from the championship <laughs> so um so obviously it's just capturing a different angle again. All the fans celebrated outside the stadium. These guys have got really, really old retro shirts on, which isn't that common around the stadium. Like a lot of new shirts, they looked like they were having a good time with the beer. I did use a flash gun for this just because it was very dark. And, um, but I don't tend to use a flash gun very often. I do try and stay away from that side of things just because I sometimes find that they're a bit hit and miss on the, on how to use them. Um, and I can't say I'm an expert in that, in the flash gun field. <laughs> um, so during COVID, obviously that hit like maybe quite soon after, start 2020. Um, and we were sort of thrown in at the deep end. We started having to sort of cover a new side of things um, because obviously sport was cancelled. Um, so here, this guy goes to Burnley. He's called John, John Whittington. And he goes to Burnley every single week that they have a game, every, every home game, every away game. And before every game, he paints his head in some sort of patterned colour. Um, so... The first thought was how, when football restarted, but it was behind closed doors. We were like, "How are we going to show the fans, um, and how are we going to how how are we going to show who's watching that it's behind closed doors and what fans would like normally be doing and what they're not doing now?" So, got in touch with John and um, found him on Facebook and um, sent him a message and said, "Would you mind if we sort of..." photographed your pre-game ritual like are you still doing it like and he said yeah absolutely like I'm still I'm still um still gonna paint my head my daughter's gonna do it so we went around to his house and photographed his him getting ready before the match um and this was against Man City and he could only watch it from home but he still did his whole pre-match ritual and the <laughs> NHS hospital gown that protected his Burnley shirt <laughs> along with his daughter painting his head with all these multicolored and the puppy sat on his knee just came together as a really interesting image and if you don't know the background behind it I think there's a lot of questions to be asked about it <laughs> about it 
Um, but even like the contact lens is is like very like intense when he looks at you and that kind of thing. So that's just, like what we were doing in lockdown. Um, uh, and then obviously Liverpool won the league and COVID went out the window and thousands and thousands and thousands of Liverpool fans like turned up at Liverpool outside the ground. We were there waiting. This was when Chelsea beat City, I want to say. Um, on the It was on a Thursday night. And um, we turned up and like as they won, as it looked more likely that they were going to win, um, fans just gathered and gathered and gathered in the thousands. It was pretty insane to watch, to be fair. Um, now, I'm not a Liverpool fan, but I was there to capture, <laughs> capture a moment. Um, here, I caught this by climbing onto a, a shipping container that was outside the ground. I have no idea what he was doing there or what was in it, to be honest. Um, but uh, me and another photographer, Chris Furlong, who works for Getty, climbed onto this sh shipping container. And we needed to get above because if you were down below amongst the crowd, you couldn't see because you just have people in front of you. And I'm quite short. So we needed that angle that was going to show, like you needed the elevation to show the fans from a different angle. Um, and this worked perfectly in front of the cop with the flares. Um, they were all stood on the gate. Like it lit up really really nicely those two flares but had I not had this angle that I wouldn't have seen that I wouldn't have shown loads of people crowded around I'd have only probably got the people on the gate so it's just trying to get a different look at things um rather than always being on the ground and and uh being like face on to them um again uh during lockdown this was a an FA Cup match and it was at Marine FC and they weren't allowed fans but obviously it's a very small non-league football ground they actually got Tottenham in the next round uh, the winner of this game so this was uh, Marine v Haven't and Waterloo and the, cra the stadium has the houses where you can watch from the back gardens on the other side and then this side is just like this really interesting like window sort of view through um and yeah I really I used a wide angle so I used the 16 to 35 on this just to sort of capture the shape of looking through what wasn't a window but was like a shit like it sort of borders it and um it frames the picture so I waited and waited for them to run into it which took a lot longer than I planned. <laughs> and then it did eventually run into it, um, but it needed to be close enough because I was on the wide angle. So, so yeah, I, I uh, yeah, this is another one of, uh, one of my favorites. So it's just a little bit different and it's something nice from capturing it at like a non-league club rather than, rather than a big Premier League club. Again, during lockdown um, at Wigan with the whole manager, um, he went up and sat in the stands amongst all the people that aren't people, <laughs> aren't people. So it's just looking at him from a different angle again, um, and seeing that there's an actual real person sat amongst a load of cardboard cutouts of fans. Um, so I'm just going to flick through a few images here. These, this is just one that I'm I like the composition of it, the cross of the two players, um, to me sort of works well. Um, so um, during 2020, we were supposed to go to the Olympics and obviously it didn't happen. Um, and I thought by 2021, oh, it will all be fine as we, as we probably all did. Um, there'll be no issues, whatever. Anyway, we, go to to we went to Tokyo and uh, we, we got there and there were still no fans um, and it was all behind closed doors, which like photographing the Olympics is obviously like, a dream. It's a huge event and anyone would be grateful, I assume, of going there. Um, so um, when, when it was all behind closed doors, there was one 
maybe two stadiums that weren't inside Tokyo that were allowed about 100 fans in. So this was in uh, Sendai and they were allowed 100 fans in and it was a football game um, and to get there we had to be escorted just to make sure that we didn't disappear because the first 14 days we had to do like a modified quarantine where we were allowed to go to work but we weren't allowed to go in anywhere else um so th here they took us on a train and we had like the media just had like a carriage to themselves and then we were took on a bus for the rest of the journey and then we booked into a hotel because it was probably about f five hours to get there and then and then we stayed over and then they took us in a bus back to the train and then we went in the station and we had a carriage to ourselves on the train again and then back straight back but on the media buses so um so there was about five of us that went it was um japan v the netherlands i'm gonna say because there was two chaps there from the netherlands newspapers the dutch newspapers so this little guy obviously a Jap japanese Japanese kid um and he had the shirt on sort of has the mask on but pulled down a bit and he's just sat in a load of empty seats but it was it was like this the whole stadium and it was one person per however many seats it was just so empty um and to me this sort of sold, told the story at the very start of the Olympics that it's quite sad that there's this whole Olympics going on and nobody can watch it live um so i thought it was quite like sort of told a story about about the story of the olympic games going ahead behind closed doors which i'm not sure has ever even happened before um but once we got going like everything was fine the photos like i thought it was a great place to take photos um we tried out loads of different techniques so here i obviously use a slow shutter speed um this is still all shooting on my one dx mark threes um and i've used a variety of lenses from a 400 a 70 to 200 a 24 70 and a 16 to 35. this was about capturing something in focus that makes the picture so as obviously the gb guy has moved uh, his helmet's moved with it and like is it you can see you can see exactly um him in focus so so it takes quite <laughs> to me it takes quite a lot of shots to get one that's just got something in focus and um so yeah this per this one shot is probably like one in a hundred that didn't work um so yeah also you're sort of looking for things that say you're at the olympics so obviously the tokyo 2020 on the floor says this is where I am. This is, it sort of gives some context to the photos as to what's going on. And it's not just a fencing match that could be anywhere kind of thing, um, which could be this one. <laughs> but again, just a different angle because there was no fans, all the fencing and like the taekwondo and all that kind of thing. Um, the backgrounds were so dark and just enabled the, the athletes to stand out. It, it makes such a nice background, the black, um, the black for them to stand out where it's lit so it's lit like downwards on the fencing on the track and um so yeah this this is obviously when they've jumped off the track and then just caught them against the black background jumping up um this is a bit different again because i used a remote for this shot so um i had a 16 to 35 on a 1dx and i had a pocket wizard on the top and then i had a pocket wizard on my camera but outside of the outside of the jumping arena so i wasn't in with i wasn't lying on the floor taking this kind of thing i left my uh i left my camera there and then i triggered it from outside so again the timing of this one the horse and the jumper i'd pr probably say are pretty spot on um but they weren't all like this some of them have chopped the horse's head off some of them have chopped the rider out some of them the colors didn't quite work i mean the sun was sort of setting at this time so the sky was quite a nice color and it's contrasted nicely with the jump I chose this specific jump because I thought it sort of rep represented the Japanese culture the way that it's set out with the Japanese dolls um so but again the red jump the red uh, jacket of the rider swift rider um works nicely against the colors of the jump 
where and the white horse whereas some of them the darker horses maybe didn't stand out quite as much and obviously the rider wasn't wearing such a bold color again didn't quite stand out as much and because I was triggering it from outside the the uh, arena um I obviously didn't know which ones were going to work and which which ones weren't so yeah again a different angle but then this was taken on my 400 as opposed to the wide angle but um just trying to capture something in the foreground the background like so they're in the middle so the the cherry blossom on each um on the corner of each jump um worked really nicely um just sort of to bring them into a depth depth of field here um so this is the synchronized swimming this is like i shot this on a 600 and it is still quite quite a big crop i would say for what we would usually crop um but i think it works tight tighter it works better tighter than it did um looser um the eyes the fact that you can see her eyes under eye underwater as well and sort of mirrored with the girl the very bold makeup for me makes it like very standout-ish and <laughs> quite scary in a way <laughs> the matching outfits and that kind of thing um but yeah I haven't used the 600 before and this was probably maybe the second day that I used it I used it the first day for the actual swimming and then the second day for the artistic swimming um and we were in the stand so it was sort of best for us to use a 600 because a 400 would have been very very loose um but i don't think i needed any more than a 600 because sometimes you were a little bit tight on them so um maybe when they're moving their arms and the legs and all that kind of thing that it just made it a little bit too tight sometimes but this one worked better a lot tighter um so so yeah um Again, these two show like different techniques that you can use for diving. Um, again, I haven't shot diving before. I hadn't shot most of these sports before, so they were all quite new to me. Um, but the diving, this is obviously, I'm just using like a, a, a fast shot speed of like one, one two, and 2,500. Um, and then the next one will we'll go back and forth, but obviously this one's a slow shot speed, so probably 100 for a second, maybe an 80th or a 60th. Um, and just capturing the movement and like the the as they've jumped off the board um it sort of makes a different shape when they're like that compared to like captured really sharp if that makes sense so it's just experimenting with different different uh, techniques but they do like five jumps each and there's probably 20 of them so that's like 100 jumps Obviously, the Tokyo sign in the background gives it a bit of perspective onto where you are, as to where you are. Um, so that's sort of what I was aiming for in these ones. Um, and then after the Olympics, I covered the Paralympics, um, which was incredible. Um, this guy was a swimmer, and that's how he set off because obviously he couldn't hold onto the side. So his um, his trainer is holding a towel. At the other end, he's got like his hands holding it, and um, then he's got it in his mouth, and he just pushes his feet off the wall, and and uh, goes goes in. Um, and then this was one of my favourite um, Paralympians and um, photos, really. Um, this lady had no limbs. Again, we've gone back. This is fencing again, so we've gone back to the black dark background. But to me, sports photography, there's so much emotion in sport and passion and like this lady had just won the gold medal in the wheelchair fencing um so was obviously very passionate about about it and shocked really I guess so she had no limbs because she'd had meningitis and um this she had like a prosthetic and then the sword fitted into that and uh and that's how she celebrated so it was it was good I mean, at the fencing you're quite close to them as well so you wouldn't use a 400 um really unless you went to the other end and sort of um did them front on um whereas this is on a 70 to 200 so 
we were sort of just sat next to them. Again, this looks like it was absolutely perfectly timed, but it wasn't. This was a little bit lucky. <laughs> I was shooting this guy for a good while. He has no arms and he plays with his with the bat in his mouth and throws the ball up with his toes. Um, and it just so happened that the ball went over his eye. I, the first shot section that I took, the ball was sort of in the centre of his head and I just moved a slight slightly one way and it it happened but there is no there is there is no technique to the fact that I've got that <laughs> perfectly covering in his eye um it was it was definitely a little bit of good luck <laughs> um but yeah he, I shot this upright which is probably one like regret that I have about this image um because it did work better upright but at the same time I feel like I could do with it having a little bit more background and I was probably a little bit too close to it um but um but yeah we we learn from we learn from that don't we and again the the background was pretty dark but there is a few little bits and bobs that make it slightly messy so but again it's uh it's just different different techniques um and then the long long shutter which is uh quite nice just a bit of movement in the taekwondo and the black border around the whole edge in um was what I was sort of aiming for in this one because the, there was like there was like boards that we had to sit down sit behind and um that's sort of what was covering the bottom of the lens to get the black at the bottom rather than the legs but sometimes it was a little bit messy at the bottom so so it, it sort of worked um, and then the closing ceremony we were on top of a building um used a slightly show, slower shutter for this um and yeah just captures the closing of the whole of the olympics really the, the and the paralympics um now i am just going to see if there's any more questions again just because i've come to the end of that section so What's your go-to setup for shooting football? Okay, so my go-to setup for shooting football is I have, I will always have two 1DX Mark Threes, one with a 7200 2.8 and one with a 400 2.8 on. Um, I will then usually for Premier League have a remote camera, which will be on a little mini tripod. And um, I'll have two pocket wizards, one on that camera and one on, my 7200 camera um and so i'll sort of trigger it using my 7200 camera so when someone comes near the goal usually most of the time i'll use a 7200 to take a photo of the goal unless they're very far out and um and then i'll um so when I take a photo on the 7200 it triggers the remote camera which i will get to i've got a comparison in a minute of um the remote and the actual goal. So I'll show you both of those in a minute. Um, but then also, if it's a very important game, I'll have a wide angle on me as well, which will be on a, a 1DX Mark II, um, which is also what I use for my um, remote camera. I use a 1DX Mark II just, um, just because that's sort of what I've got. I mean, <laughs> that's what I've got really. So um, that's my setup. I guess um, for the championship matches and stuff, we'll use um, laptops to send from. But for Premier League or anything above that, um, then I send off the back of the camera using the set button to an FTP server, um, and then they'll go land straight on the desk, and then the desk will uh, the desk will send them out. Um, so I'll go back to share my screen. There's not too many more too many more slides but then we'll have if we, there's any more questions or whatever then feel free um to ask um okay so this was recently i went to the champions league final which is obviously a huge huge sporting event one of the biggest ever um and i absolutely loved it um so courtois was man of the match and at the end of the match, I said to the guy sat next to me, Sean, I said, 
we just need the goalie to run at us celebrating and what did he do ran at us celebrating which was lovely <laughs> but it could have gone very differently we were thankfully sat in the right corner for the goal um and obviously Real Madrid the Real Madrid we were sat in front of the Real Madrid fans so that's why they ran our way um so so yeah this was taken on my 400 um because he ran from the other end of the pitch, <laughs> cheering and screaming. There are a few other frames of it, but there's a little bit messy because the referee's in the background with a blue shirt on. So this one has quite a clean background, which I quite like, obviously. Um, the cleaner, the better, in my opinion. But um, but yeah, it sort of just works quite nicely. Um, and then on the other side of it, this is Trent Alexander-Arnold, who has not put his med runners up medals on because he was run up presumably and he just didn't didn't really want to so as well as capturing like the emotion of like the highs you have to capture the lows as well which um at my when I was at my end it was harder to do so because the Liverpool players were obviously clapping the Liverpool fans and down that end so but there was four of us there five of us there so we had person in each corner so it was quite good for us whereas if you just have one person there like when I was at the Women's World Cup then you have to just capture what's best um for you really um and make sure you capture a bit of everything um whereas we could sort of focus on what was in front happening in front of us rather than what was happening all over the pitch um obviously the trophy lift again this is a bit of a free-for-all so we had one, so each wire agency has like one person that can go to the very centre and then the rest of us just sort of tuck in uh, where we can. So I was tucked in on the left hand side. Um, it still works. I'm obviously not very central, not central central, but that, that's OK. It, it works from every angle, really. Uh, and then there's a run around on the pitch afterwards, which, as you can see, was a bit chaotic. Um, so... There's Modric with the trophy, they jump over the barrier and then they do a run to the fans and cheer and throw his trophy around and whatever, whatever else. Um, so it's one of my favourites. And just to give you a perspective of how many photographers were there, this isn't my photograph, but it's from Getty. Um, and you can spot me <laughs> in the middle of it all. Um, obviously, there is so many photographers all wanting to get a shot and it's a bit of a who can elbow who out of the way really <laughs> um, and being small in that doesn't really give you um doesn't really give you much of an advantage until you sort of squeeze your way to the front and then hope nobody pushes you out of the way <laughs> so yeah that's sort of um what it's like at the finals when you're trying to get a photo of the trophy that when they come off the pitch kind of thing um, then going back to how it was before, um, this this was a comparison of the remote. Um, so this photo is obviously, I took it with my 7200, cropped it in a little bit because it was probably a bit wider, but we do a few different crops of them. Um, obviously, number 14 just scored a goal for, no, uh, for Republic of Ireland. Sorry, won't get that wrong. <laughs> um, and then as a contrast to that, that's the picture on the remote. So my remote is obviously behind the goal, focused on the grass just between the goal line and the six yard box. And it, this one's worked quite well. The remote's fired. Like sometimes it doesn't always fire. Sometimes your remote's facing the wrong way. Like it, it's all a bit lucky with remotes on where the goal happens. Obviously the goal here is in the goal mouth. Whereas if the goal's out where number 19 stood, then it doesn't make as good a picture as when they're stood on the goal line if that makes sense um so yeah this this again was using this was using the pocket wizards so similar setup to the horse jumping one um but football football version so um again with a wide angle wide angle lens on it um so let's just see if there's any more questions that's sort of all the photos that i've got um to show um but then i was going to talk through what would be your dream event to capture? Okay, so my dream event was probably the Champions League final, but um, seeing as I've just, as uh, soon as I did that, um, my dream event is the World Cup, the Men's World Cup. Um, I would absolutely, um, well, I am going to Qatar at the end of the year um, for 37 days, which should be 
amazing um that's what I've always wanted to cover um I absolutely love football and to me like there's no bigger event than that really so um yeah my dream event would be the world cup um so hopefully I will complete that by by the end of the year um so is there any more questions before I sort of go on to what's in my kit bag um no okay i'll go on to my kit bag and then if there's any more questions after that we can go back to them oh one more how many photos do you tend to capture in one game i guess you your shoot burst okay yeah so one minute let's cancel that for a second um so I tend to capture, it depends on the game really. So a championship game, I wouldn't capture as many as I do in a Premier League game. Um, championship, I would probably capture maybe a thousand, maybe a few more if there was lots of goals because you don't tend to get as much match, match action out of a championship game as a Premier League game. A Premier League game, I would probably say between 1,500 and 2,000. Um, but again, it varies. You could be at the wrong end. If you're at the right end, then you're probably more likely to capture more photos. Um, but I would probably, like, rough estimate between the two cameras, I would say that, really. Um, and, yes, I do shoot on continuous. Obviously, you get a lot more frames out of the R3, um, but sometimes you can also have too many. So I have known a few people just turn that down a little bit <laughs> so it's not quite as many frames because otherwise you could end up with thousands and thousands um and it's quite hard to go through them um but yeah i i tend to try and time it where um i don't have to take too many frames but obviously sometimes if there's a goal if there's a celebration you just have to capture everything that's going on whereas if you're trying to capture action then you can sort of guess a little bit as to what's going to happen here and there um so my equipment um, okay so this is sort of what's in my kit bag i know they are all mark ii cameras but i do have two mark threes now so um i have two mark twos and two mark threes um then i have my 400 my 7200 my 16 to 35 my 24 to 70 and then those two little black uh things are the pocket wizards my my fi devices blow that spare batteries and then a flash gun and then my monopod and then i do also have a mini tripod as well uh, for my remote camera so i tend to use the 400 for capturing like match action manager stuff like if we're talking football uh, managers stuff um, I do also have a 1.4 converter for on my 400 when I'm trying to get managers, just in case I need to be a little bit closer. Some grounds you're closer than than you are like other grounds, which which is fine. But it just need that bit of additional zoom sometimes, um, and especially if like it's a new manager or if it's someone's going to get sacked or things like that, um, then you just sit on the manager for 20 minutes and get reactions, looking dejected, looking happy. If there's a celebration, the goal might be the, the other end and it might be important that the manager's celebrating, that kind of thing. Um, 7,200 are then used for like goal mouth action. So anything within the 18 yard box really, or any action that's directly in front of me. Um, then the wide angle um, I'll use for previews outside the ground of the stadium. Maybe just if there's a nice sunset or things like that um and then my 2470 similar I sort of alternate those two odds as to where the, which one goes on my remote because they both make quite similar really um and then obviously I've explained about my pocket wizards the MiFi I use to send off the back of the camera um but I also at Premier League grounds we have a cable plugged into an ethernet port just as a backup as sometimes that's quicker um, obviously the Mark III's have the Wi-Fi built into them, so that's quite good because you can plug the Ethernet into the MiFi and just connect to the MiFi. So you've not got a cable in the side of your camera. Whereas um, 
my Mark IIs, I have one little WFT um, transmitter, which is okay for sending on one camera, but the other camera, I would have to plug the cable into the side. Um, so it, it's just different options, really. Some stadiums, the cables work, sometimes they don't. Some it's It, it all varies, really. Um, again, I try not really to use my flash, cam flash gun, but it's always there just in case I need it. Um, and then spare batteries and everything. Um, so, yeah, my favourite is probably the 7200. But, again, we need all of them for different things, really. So um, they, they all have their bonuses and pluses and minuses and that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, I think that's probably everything that I've got to say um if there's any questions okay out of all your photos which one is your favorite and why um out of all your photos which is your favorite and why um I don't know really all for different reasons I would probably say one of the ones from the Olympics um if I was to if I had to choose one I'll go back and show <laughs> show you um, if I had to choose one, I would probably say this one. Just because I was so taken aback by how amazing this woman was. Like, I think it's sort of a personal link to it as well. Like, not personal, but how I felt at that time I was taking it. I sort of felt quite choked about how happy she was. And I just felt it was a really amazing achievement to sort of pick up a fencing sword and just think, yeah, I'm going to go win gold at the Olympics, the Paralympics. I just thought it was really amazing to witness and her with her family celebrating after was just really nice. Just a really nice uh, feeling. Um, I think there was another tough one. What is the one thing you wish you knew when you started taking photos? Ooh don't know <laughs> um the one thing you wish you knew when you started taking photos uh, I think not to get too so if you have a good day don't get too high about it if you have a bad day don't get too low about it like that's probably a good piece of advice because you can really get yourself down in the dumps if you're having if, you, if things aren't going your way if um celebrations don't go your way if you didn't get that picture that somebody else has got all that kind of thing or if you shot a goal out of focus like it all happens um so just don't get too down about it because the next day you could game you could have a great game and if you're shooting if you're shooting four times a week if you're shooting two times a week you just look forward to the next game don't get too attached or hung up on the last game because it can affect your next one if that makes sense um so just take them all as like a blank sheet of paper and then if you've had a good game then great enjoy it you've had a good game but if you've had a bad game don't get too disappointed about it because you're always going to have another game that will probably be better than the last one or something better will come along or something worse or it, it just happens so so yeah that's probably what i'd say really nice choice shows the real passion yeah i agree it shows the passion of the athlete um, that's what I sort of aim to, aim to look at, really. Um, nice celebration. <laughs> Any more questions or are we all, all done? No? Okay. Um, I mean, we've nearly been on we've nearly been on an hour um about 55 minutes um so if there's no more questions then i will probably leave it at that um obviously if anybody does have any more questions and just wants to send me a message or whatever then then feel free to do so on instagram or facebook or send me an email or anything like that um then then yeah you're more than welcome to and i'll do my best to answer um but yeah, that's sort of probably, that's my journey and how I've got into sports photography, really. Um, so yeah, thanks for listening and tuning in. Um, and thanks for all your questions as well. Um, it's, it's great to hear. 
So I will love and leave you now. <laughs> Thank you very much.